Okay, and I guess there's uh, uh, time for acceptance of the agenda. Uh, no other items to bring to the agenda or changes. Mm. Very good. And then I'll switch to the action items. Before I switch to the action items, we do have a, a wiki where we document the, the open action items and the closed ones as well. But uh, I missed last meeting and uh, I just want to make sure that uh, the action items were uh, were not uh, logged in another place. So, Loa, so, did we... Tarek, Tarek uh, we actually just did not address the action item last time. So, there was... But, there, there are no minutes, but there was no action. Okay, okay, that, that is understood. Okay. Okay, so let me flip to the action items and uh, let me just uh, edit. Uh, oh, I need to sign in. All right. Um, <clears throat> so we 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 we, uh, we were talking just about the uh, the meeting time. The meeting time uh, is set. Uh, th this meeting time, the recurring uh, design team meeting time, is currently set uh, uh, to uh, eleven Eastern. It's one and a half hours. Um, and uh, I believe this action item is addressed. Uh, any, uh, any concerns or my comment here? I actually try to uh, make it one. So the requirements from U.S. West Coast and Asia was about the same thing, and since I myself can't do uh, at, at ten o'clock here in Manila um, evening time. So I put it at 11. Uh, I will be going back to Sweden maybe around May 15. We can bring it up again if we want to. But for the time being, uh, we will use this time. Okay, that's good by, by me. And uh, let us know, design team, if you have... Uh... Any concerns with uh, with the current time? So I'll move this to the closed section. Yeah. Uh, so Loa, when you go back to Sweden, we can move it uh, one hour earlier. Is that what you mean? Well, but that actually we get it very early in California. So the, what I said is that people in in, in China. Asia in general uh, have one point of view, and people in California have another point of view. They don't want to do it. I can just I, when I go back to Sweden, I can do it either time. Yes, now I can't do it earlier than uh, eleven p.m. my time, but we can discuss it again. Okay, and uh, maybe one half an hour earlier is also. Possible for us. <laughs> uh, so okay. We can end uh, before the midnight. Okay, that, that's yeah. that's an idea. Thanks. Bring that, uh, bring that this up. Uh, the first meeting when I'm back in Stockholm, we fix a new action item. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, the next action item is on the agenda today, so I'll skip over that and go to the next one. Uh, we have an action item to, uh, to update on the requirements draft. It's a long standing one, but maybe it's addressed at the end. Uh, we do have an update uh, back in March that all the comments received were addressed and uh, rev a new revision was posted or has been posted. Yes. And uh, 
oh, there's new comments received as well. Um, let me give a chance to the requirements draft uh, authors to update us on this. That's Anyone? probably Steve. Steve. What was the question? Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Did you, did you want to answer, Loa? And what was now, the question? It's actually status of the uh, uh, requirements draft relative to the action point uh, that uh, I don't Eric think I think I don't think we've done anything to it since we uploaded a new version and requested uh, and, and you put it into the uh, uh, IETF process. Okay, um, let me be more. I specific. certainly haven't spoken to Matthew in any time, and I um, since he did the last upload. So, Stuart, the, the last time we logged an update, uh, there were new comments received. And should we assume those? All the be... comments we received, we put in to the latest version, I believe. So, uh, okay. I, I, I don't think there have been any comments on, well, what is the current one? It was Matthew did the upload. Um, um. Yes, I, I can state that confirm that my comments uh, addressed. Thank you. I'm pretty certain we were up to date on all the comments we received before you put it into the adoption call. And then it's currently in the adoption call and receiving comments, isn't it? Which is what what's expected. Oh, but, the current version is the zero four. Yeah. So that that could, should include all existing comments if i remember correctly it had all it, we addressed all comments up to the point where uh, we asked you to um, do the adoption process and we're waiting yeah. for a tablet of stone to emerge out of the uh, adoption process okay but this was actually uh, uh, april 11th so it's only 10 days back so i think we can close the and then lots of people were on holiday, so I think the action is yeah. closed. We've done all the updates we were request, requested to do then. Okay. I I did log that uh, all of the comments have been addressed. And the yeah. <clears throat> may, may I say something? I think the recent update is not only to solve the comments received uh, in previous versions, but also some update about the terminology and some other content of the requirements so um, i think as i mentioned uh people need to give it another review about the, the diffs from the previous version and i, I have uh, sent some comments to the mailing list and i think uh, there can be more comments on the re other sections about the requirements i, I think a lot of those comments though she were really semantic comments rather than fundamental comments in terms of what we're going to end up um, with at the end of the day. Mm. I think, uh, Stuart, if, if I may, it's, it's Wim, Wim Hendricks here from uh, Nokia. I think the most, I, I unfortunately, I could not keep up with the thread, but I think if you look at the comments that Robert are making, they are very fundamental, right? So the well, yeah, Robert is basically saying, should we bother to do this project or not? Yeah, correct. Uh, but, right, right, well, that's... And, but there is, there is more subtle project uh, or comments as well to say, do we need in-stack data at all, right? Can we not do everything with post-stack data? So those type of things have an implication on, on the requirements potentially, depending on what we want to do with it. Wait, wait, a minute. wait a minute, Wim. Speaking as a working group chair, yes. uh, this document is now in work group last call. All the comments from Robert and anyone else actually goes into resolution as uh, working group adoption, not working group last call, working group adoption call. All the comments goes into resolution before we actually accept the document. Uh, but the, I mean, but I think I think we get sort of two. I think the fundamental question is. So two fundamental questions. Do we want a document on this subject? Is this document a good starting point to hand it over to working group control? Okay, that's that's a different question. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. those are the those are the adoption questions. 
Are we get yeah. too hung up with the with oh, sure, sure. trying to negotiate during um, adoption and that in in the thought that if they don't get it done in adoption, they'll never get it done. Well, that's rubbish, of course. Um, so the first question uh, and Robert's fundamental question is: Do we want to do this piece of work? And um, if the answer to that is no, then we should just shut this group down. If the answer to that is yes, then the question is, is this as good a place as any to start? Right. And if we decide later on that we don't want uh, in-stack data or we don't want post-stack data, then as the document develops, that will get reflected in the document. No, no, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But that, what I'm trying to say is that I, I, what I'm trying to say is that saying that there is no further open things is yeah. Well, there will be open things all the uh, way until we send it to the yeah. IESG. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Okay, agree. Yeah. So well, I'm in agreement with Stuart. I think we should um, answer the fundamental questions about the draft and the tweaking and you know the technical details can be dealt with as a work document if we're going in that direction okay um, that, comment, so that comment applies that comment applies actually across the whole suite of mpls adoptions because too often we have minute discussions um during adoption when we should just get on and adopt the document and let everyone have the editor uh, have the control over the content. It's a general criticism of the way we do things in MPLS. Uh, uh, I kind of agree, uh, though. I have fought the battle over two decades not to do it, and it always comes back to people bringing up those minute things and claim right, well, they are. Blocks for making things work with document. Normally, we disregard them. Right. Um, the thing here is that we are not discussing the working group adoption poll. We are just now discussing whether the AP in the action point list is done. And I think it is. It should be closed. Yeah, exactly. So the action item or the action point was about addressing comments on the requirements draft and indeed uh, the last update i logged is that all comments outstanding have been addressed in revision four so now if if you think yeah, we uh, so you mean the comments received before the adoption call started we've addressed all the we addressed all the comments we were aware of before adoption started yeah i think make it clear that uh, the comments received all, all before comments, the adoption call all comments wait ye, ye, there is no way in the ihf process to getting around things that there are comments received during the work group adoption call they are there they are logged they need to be addressed yeah, I just uh, just just uh, the record uh, to be clear here. Yeah, if you think yeah, this I mean, is clear I mean, enough, it's okay. Okay, fine. I mean, it, 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 you you will always have uh, the ability to comment on things that you don't think were addressed because there's going to be two more fundamental polls before this becomes a um, an RFC. One is working group last call, and the other is IETF last call. So if anything gets omitted by mistake. You have two major opportunities to pick it up, and of course, opportunities to pick it up during its gestation. Sure. And actually, there is one other major opportunity just now. There is a working group adoption poll. Send in what you have. So that's what they've been doing. Yeah. yeah. But the... And it's common okay. to adopt the document as is and then require the uh, editors to uh, address the comments that is the common process uh, there is an escape also uh, and that is uh, we've done it a couple of times to say okay those changes are so essential we want to make them before making it the working group mm -hmm. document and then after that is done the working group shares take the decision to make it a working group document Everything within the uh, IETF process. 
anyway the key question is do we do we want to continue with this project or shut it down that's robert's question uh if we decide to continue with it then i think uh the the semantics about what we call it are um just semantics uh, and, and there are some subtle differences but um fun, let, let's get the fundamental right to start with which is are we going to have an indicator of some sort and are we going to have data in one or other or both places so let me clarify maybe what i was asking or what i was alluding to so i mean yes i'm late and i missed the adoption calls for some of the documents yes indeed However, I was not really trying to say close the project if the project's idea is actually to add some additional actions to MPLS data plane, because there are many ways which you don't need to impact the current stack to add those actions. And that was my point. So, right. so you close it, but maybe change the design. So, so there are some actions that I think are quite hard, for example, if we want to do deterministic networking properly, I think we need to move on from the horrible design that we've currently got to put information, to put the latency information uh, much closer to the forwarder and not have to strip the whole stack off in order to get to it. Or well, is I'm not sure there? I agree with that because whether you are look, doing some work based on the service label or based on another label in ISD or, or, or PSD, it really is the same functionally. Um, not quite, not quite. The way DetNet's got it, it's a complete layer architecture and uh, there's no integration. Um, uh, may I suggest to add this uh, discussion to the agenda? I don't mind giving it, uh, you know, it, it's time to uh, and importance, but mm, maybe just stick to the updating the action points and come back to it. So, if you want to put that on the agenda, we really need the DetNet people in the meeting, and they 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 don't, not many attend very often. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, if you want to open it, Stuart, you brought it up, so uh, we can put it up for next time we meet uh, this discussion, or um, you know, continue on it right after the action points. And for reference, there is there is no really good. Detnet v6 solution yet. Uh, Stuart? Yeah. Maybe the way to proceed is for uh, you to work and get Detnet use cases into the use case document. Okay. S some of them are there, John, and you know, we'll talk more, but maybe I, you know, we will add. Um, but, but I think we, I think possibly the point is we need to discuss the deficiencies in the existing approach. Ah, okay. So the gaps or deficiencies, right? Yeah, because I, I think I also want to add here uh, to Robert's point a little bit. Uh, today, I mean, if you look to, to the current requirements draft and also the framework to a bit, there is already a certain composition on how to do things, right? I mean, it's not explicit. Uh, there is use cases, right, that you have, uh, Tarek, but none of them implies, I so there is multiple ways to potentially implement the use cases, right? Mm -hmm. So what we are... I, what would be interesting to do, I, or at least one of the things that I was going to bring up when I, because you have the use cases on the document, let's say you don't do in stack data. You can only do post stack data as an example, right? Or yeah. maybe there is another way that Robert uh, say, can you not do the use case at all? Oh, I didn't understand. Um, okay. Uh, if I may, um, so. The document is for the working group uh, and for the community to review. So if uh, their opinion that uh, certain scenarios are not really worth pursuing, uh, yes, of course, bring it on, uh, explain why it's, it's not important. For example, uh, somebody thinks that we should not support IOM over MPLS data plane. Okay. Why? Greg, Greg, for I'm example, not even. Or for example, uh, if I may, if yeah, so, uh, somebody yeah. says that we don't need to do OEM with uh, um, MPLS data plane based uh, service function chaining that emulates NSH. Okay, fine. 
No, but my 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 point is even different. Okay, I didn't my understand. Point is actually, you. I'm not even I'm not even questioning the use case uh, per se. I'm I'm questioning the way to implement. But uh, uh, okay, are, are you suggesting? Are you seeing? So that? can we can we have this discussion afterwards? It's not. Uh, yeah, we we should not have it now. But uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Let's uh, let's have the discussion. Uh, uh, you know, um, when we move to the next item on the agenda. Uh, but but that's a good discussion to continue. I'm not uh, stopping it. Uh, when? No, no, sure, no. I, I agree. Yeah, it's not the right time. But I wanted to bring it up because I think we have to discuss this, which will clarify potentially what we do on the requirements. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so sorry. that's the relationships uh, somehow. Yeah. Okay. I promise to move faster now on the open items. Uh, um, 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 we have uh, gather input. So this this greedy is you're on the agenda. I just reiterate that the next one gather input from vendors and implementers on on the feasibility of of uh, the proposals. Or uh, we last we have logged that Jimmy uh, um, to provide feedback. Is is there any update on this, Jimmy? Do you talk? I think I already did that one uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, maybe March the twenty first. Let me check. Um, March uh, maybe seventeen. Okay, and uh, there were there were uh, uh, there were slides that you shared. Uh, yeah, to... I have updated uh, uploaded to the uh, meeting minute page. Yeah, let me check the date. Was, there was a wiki where we document where we had the the previous slides from Huayu and uh, and others as well. Um, maybe we can upload it there as well. Yeah. Okay, um, so this action item was supposed to gather input. Uh, do we have other people? I guess you know I'm you know I'm hearing from Wim and uh, others as well. Uh, you know, should we keep this action item open? You want to bring up more discussions? Uh, should I you know do I give uh, Robert or Wim an action item to talk about the uh, feasibility? I think this goes back to the point that Stewart was, uh, you know, put is, uh, you know, do you think there are issues you want to present uh, or, or concerns you want to present on the solutions or the implementations? So, if you, if you do want, I can log an action item at, uh, against your name. For me, I, I'm not sure whether it would be an action to me necessarily. I, for me, it's a bit of a joint action together. Uh, let's say, I, so what I was trying to allude to before, Tarek, was the following is, let's say you only have one option. You can only have, I, I would say, post-tech data properly, uh, because that we probably need for other things. Let's say you only have that. Which use case can we not fulfill? Uh, yeah, I mean, that that's a good question. And we can start uh, revisiting the use cases and see which ones uh, fall off and which remains. Yeah. But the question there, you know, about this action item was, you know, yeah, the, no, there's a different action in my yeah, I, I think you could do all of them yeah. with post stack data, assuming certain parameters about stack size. But sure. there is a question as to whether it would be the most effective or efficient way of doing it. I second that. Yeah, I, I might. I was trying to answer that this action item is about uh, the feasibility of the proposal. Um, I, I heard some concerns about ISD, and uh, um, this is why I. Uh, I mean, you on. could do the whole thing on a new FEC with post stack data, right? That would be architecturally the simplest, but whether it was a feasible to actually get it to fly at speed, I don't know. See, but then, then that would be the, the question to ask uh, in this section then, right? So that, that's the relationship ship towards this action potentially then. Let's say you only had that, would, which uh, hardware would we knock out? 
Oh goodness knows. Any, any, anything anything with limited stack debt breach. Yes, but okay, I, any so I I think I, true, any hardware will have a limit, right? So there is no hardware without a limit. Uh, yeah, but I think Broadcom's got quite a low limit, hasn't it? Yeah, correct. So, but yeah, the, the question is, really? yeah, we don't actually have any designs to evaluate yet. That's a bit of a challenge, which I see, uh, John, why I'm bringing it up because we can. I so my point is, I, the more flexibility you add, you also add more complexity, right? Uh, potentially, right? So, and you have to trade that off between each other in my view and and right and, and and when we have designs to evaluate that's when we'll do these trade-offs I, I agree i think we need the design uh, to be documented and then we can uh, critique it we can criticize it but just throwing uh, theories i it's hard All right. don't want to throw theory. that's why i think tarek i was proposing to do it based on the use cases oh you're Isn't coming it? from the use case to to so influence the Certainly, it would be a useful exercise to go through the use cases and see, uh, um, and, and in broad brush terms, um, say whether they need post stack data, whether uh, whether they would be more efficient with uh, in stack data. Correct. Yeah. So that's that's a bit uh, where I was going to for me because that gives us I, the use cases should drive our requirements to a certain extent, right? Uh, and as such, for me, that would be the exercise which would be potentially good to do, I think, to help in making that decision. Right. So who's going to have the first cut at that? So I think what we should probably do is, let's say you have the use case, I, uh, I, we have the use case document. And I think the, for me, the exercise, uh, maybe Robert, you have other <laughs> proposals, but I, the, the 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 thing that I would propose is let's say you don't have in stack data right and only post stack data, what efficiency are we losing or what are we going to lose with certain hardware that uh, we cannot do? Maybe it's not the hardware or efficiency in general. Um, just so why do we start with that assumption? I mean, we have uh, people who have done the analysis that in stack data is feasible and um, and you know, doable. So why are we starting with an assumption that we only do post data? How to uh, answer that? Uh... Sorry, who, who was trying to speak? Um, Kriti, you were talking. Go ahead. Hello, uh, Tarek, if I may. Um... Okay, um, I, I didn't capture. I, I, do, I don't. I, I don't. Uh, feel that uh, the use case document rec suggests any particular uh, technique to address these use cases. Uh, so, if um, someone wants to analyze how to realize the use cases based on specific methods, um, of course. Uh, bring it as a proposal, uh, as a draft, and uh, let's discuss it. I second but... you, Greg, definitely. I, I do second this opinion, and this is what I'm trying to document on the action item is a whim to come next time and present the implication of having no ISD on the use cases. And I, you know, I do have an opinion, but I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I'm hearing whim. You know, trying to, I don't know if it's whim or joint. He said joint. But... Because I cannot do it for other hardware, right? So I, I, because this has implication on certain implementations, right? I cannot speak for any, for other people. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, that, that was exactly the point of the action item is for, uh, you know, at least what you can talk about, you can talk about and, and, and raise the issues that you, you know, you're aware of. And it's up to the working group to evaluate if uh, you know, we want to still go through it or not. And that's what, what other people have been doing, why you and, and other people. And perhaps look at it not from the point of view of a particular uh, chipset, but uh, more as uh, architectural approach. So if uh, the pos position is that uh, post tech data is their only method to be used. So 
let's uh, present and analyze uh, how it works for all the cases that we have at hand uh, documented in the use case draft. Hey, Greg? Yes. Um, I think that the, the, uh, a prior step would be to decide which use cases we actually want to support. Uh, okay, if it's a good yeah starting point. Um, so uh, I I disagree. I think the problem that we are trying to um, solve is the wrong problem. We're we we're not building an architecture for today or for the things we see right now. What we're trying to do is fit into the MPLS architecture for for the next decade. We've had a particular architecture and a particular way of doing things for 20 years. The thing is, in those 20 years, in the last uh, seven, eight years, we've really changed something. It's not fundamental, but we've made the MPLS stacks huge. And so we can't just ignore that. We can't just say we go on the way we do. And yeah, if we could say, let's build only post act data, but I think the more tools we have in our tool chest, the better we can solve these problems. And so if we can have an, uh, I mean, I'm not saying don't do PSD. I'm saying we, you know, we need all the tools we can, we can have. And there's reason to do that. I mean, it's not like computer networks say, uh, sorry, computer systems say, Oh, I have memory, so I don't need caches. I don't need anything else. I'll just put everything in main memory or I'll put everything on disk. I mean, that would be even more, you know, nut nutty. <clears throat> they say, no, we, we want disk, we want cache, we want, uh, I, even the disk today, they used to have uh, an SSD portion so that you can access those things quicker. And then you have main memory and then you have caches. I'm saying something similar for um, how we approach this. If it is not feasible, uh, you know, in hardware to process both ISD and PSD, we have a problem. But if they are both feasible and they both have their place, why would we, you know, tie one of our hands behind our backs before we even start? And by setting this forward, we can then put the direction for people who build chips to say, let's optimize for these things. And that's how we built MPLS. I mean, when we first came up with MPLS, we didn't know how hardware would approach this. You know, we 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 kept adopting our hardware so that uh, so adapting our hardware so that it would meet the MPLS requirements. And we have very different requirements today. Uh, we we have to deal with, I mean, not just the new functions we want to do, but we have to deal with deep stacks. And I think if you close your eyes to that. Yeah, fine. I mean, that that's not that's not the approach I would uh, take. But, but Kiriti, I have a different opinion on that. So, and I don't disagree on the flexibility. But I, I'm saying let's do one thing and do it very well, right? And let's say we build for the future. Let's say we only have PSD, and you make PSD flexible to do it, including no, no, deep I, stack, I, oh, because you already let me let me finish. You already you saying we have to deal with deep stack. I do agree, right? But let's then make PSD the default way of doing it and make it flexible such that we can do all the use cases and optimize one thing and do it extremely well. And I think it's a, a simplicity helps us all because we all have to deal with very fast forwarding continuous and the speeds are going up. And I believe I'm of the opinion that if you do one thing well, which gives you the flexibility, it is much more future state. Okay, so let me respond to that because it's like saying, let's just build really, really fast memory. And that does not happen. People build caches because they can't build really, really fast memory. So you could say, let's just do one thing and do that really well. Yeah, you can. I mean, I am the first one to say you could do everything in PSD. I don't want to do ISD because there are things that you can do in ISD that you can't do in PSD. But you have to deal with the fact that you have deep stacks. And so for yes. existing hardware, uh, it's a huge problem. And for new hardware, we have to keep evolving it so that we can get to where we need to get to. So if we do if we do I, I, ISD today and, and then we decide in five years, okay, um, now we've built hardware that doesn't need, uh, that can deal very efficiently with deep stacks, 
fine. We, we then have to take it out. But today and the current generation of uh, hardware, I don't think we can, de I, I know that there is hardware that we have <clears throat> that, we, that can't deal with very deep stacks and, and PSD. Yes, but even today's hardware, right? Even certain of these things we can do with today's hardware that you have uh, at your disposal with the tools that we have. I so don't I disagree. We are I'm saying that ISD is we are continuously going back to today and tomorrow. So I, I think we have to say, okay, we have what we have today and then let's do the next thing, right? Uh, and I'm focusing on let's do the next thing well, right? And let's deal with what we have right now. And let's focus on the things that we have today and let uh, us deal with, with that uh, as we have it. Because you're not going to do anyhow, if you're saying in stack data with current hardware, lots of current hardware cannot do that. Uh, oh, um, okay, uh, if, if I may. Yeah, I, 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 let me let me just close this, uh, um, you know, update and uh, I will give it back to you, Greg. Um, Thank you. I did a tentatively log uh, an action item against when I want to make sure that you're signing up on that. If not, I will remove it. Um, WIM is proposing to evaluate the implications of having no ISD on the use cases. Uh, is that something that you want to produce, WIM, or you, should I take it off? I want to focus, yeah, so I, I think first let's agree on all the use cases, right? And then let's do it uh, after we've done that. Okay, is that I okay? will remove because this. I don't want to boil okay. the ocean uh, just uh, for the sake of it, right? Okay, no worries. I just want to be yeah. uh, accurate in what I'm documenting, and I will submit this. Uh... Yeah, I, I saw, uh, Greg, uh, Tariq, uh, I just checked uh, the minutes, and uh, my presentation was on March the 3rd. So, and I just shared the link of the minutes to the chat, so people, if they want to check the material, they can download it from the minute. Okay, I'll uh, note yeah. it down. And you can update the date in the uh, minute here. Thanks. Uh, yeah, may I say something? Uh, my, my suggestion is to evaluate first uh, what the use case we really want to support. Then next step, we study if it can be supported with uh, just a single um, solution. Because uh, uh, if, if, if using uh, PSD can solve all the problems, then there's no need to introduce another way uh, just to keep the system as simple as possible. Um, so, so I think that's the right approach. We cannot uh, predict future uh, what uh, we will need to support, but uh, if all the no uh, use cases can be supported by uh, by the mechanic we provide today, that, that's good enough. That's fine. A uh, sure sign it will be flexible enough to support future uh, use cases. Right. right for you, I agree. Um, I will, um, you know, switch to the use cases discussion and in there, I will highlight a use case that requires in stack data, uh, because the path is made of multiple segments and, uh, we will talk more about it. So the idea of the path made of multiple segments and having multiple in stack data. So for portions of the path, uh, helps a lot. Uh, I don't know how you could do that with post stack data, and we can talk more of if you think uh, PSD will solve that use case. Okay, so I will go to the agenda. Uh, the next item we have is the MIAD use cases. I will not go, uh, this is the, the draft. Uh, we have posted revision two, I believe uh, it is the latest. And uh, um, I will not go in details to the changes, but uh, I want to stick to the uh, table of contents um, and go over the, you know, the use cases. Uh, you know, each section was supposed to elaborate a bit more about uh, the use case. Um, uh, I'll just go over the use case title, and then we can discuss further uh, about the implications or do we want to, is there interest in solving that? Uh, is that okay a plan? Um, and I will invite all my co-authors that we've been discussing actively this, uh, this draft. And I know there were debates about uh, specific sections in here. We will, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to invite them to, to speak, uh, to uh, get to the mic and talk more about, uh, the use cases. Okay. 
I don't hear objections, so I'm going to pro proceed. Uh, the first use case that we do. Right. Right. Yeah. I, have, I have one comment. Uh, I've been asked about uh, the MIAD in the uh, name of the current draft. And uh, the decision we take in is that uh, we change to M&A when we produce the working group document. That's right. Yeah, we did talk about that. And I believe, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm following suit uh, with the requirements draft. You know, if, uh, if, and when we adopt the document, we're going to anyway, change the name. So at that time, the MIAD in, in the name of the draft will, will disappear. <clears throat> uh, that said, I did, you know, as part of the changes that we made in this latest revision, uh, we tried to align to the uh, terminology that was uh, proposed in the framework draft and, uh, and the requirements draft. The, you know, the move towards m and &E, uh, MPLS network actions uh, and network actions and, uh, and ancillary data. So we tried to align to those uh, terminology as part of these changes. Yeah, uh, regarding the terminology, I think we also raised some comments uh, on the mailing list. I think uh, basically we need to have different uh, terms for like the the whole set of the ancillary data in the packet and uh, action specific data on action specific like a flag or something. We need to have different terms for them. I think they need, they cannot mixed. Uh, using the same term here. Jimmy, th this draft does not introduce the terms and does not define the new terms. Yeah, uh, yeah this is a uh, common, uh, yeah, yeah. Com uh, not only on this document, I think uh, before we align the terminology, we need to make some uh, discussion about the, okay. the whole set of terminologies. If yeah. If if I may, uh, can we um, let Tarek present and keep uh, comments substantive related to their uh, topic of discussion? Yeah, I think he's talking about yeah. the terminology, so I made this comment. No, the terminology yeah. of the document, not terminology of uh, our design team in general. So, do you have a comment about the terminology used in this document? I think they are related. How? Can you demonstrate it? The network action indicator. I think this is an update. I don't have, I don't think we have an AI in the document. I can do a quick search. Uh, yeah, I just uh, checked the diff. Yeah, it, it's it's an acronym and then that's the only place we... It's in the introduction section. Is it? I. I did the search, yeah. it's not showing up. Only one place. It's, a, no. it's a, not an acronym, it's like a network action and bracket and NA and then oh, an indicator. A. Right, okay. Yeah. So I, 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 so that's I, why I resist. I think, I think I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing that this is a good topic to discuss. And I, honestly, we're not, again, we're not bringing, defining the ter ter terminology in this draft. Yeah, understood. Yeah. And and the intent was to document use cases rather than uh, a, uh, um, a a um, a way how to solve them. Uh, so we are not trying to define how to solve them. Okay. Okay. So the, the point taken, but I will raise it with the uh, with the other drafts as well. With the uh, the draft that's introducing the M and E. Um, so the use cases, I want to start with no further fast reroute. Uh, in no further fast reroute, we have a uh, an internet draft uh, at, uh, at the MPLS working group, and uh, it documents a use case where a second order fast reroute uh, for for packets might be detrimental and uh, it might cause a, uh, an endless uh, loop, and eventually packets will be dropped, or maybe not. Um, <clears throat> Um, the problem is documented in that draft. The, there is some hint of a solution in the draft, but, um, but we, uh, we, um, the design team uh, took ownership of this use case um, and they wanted to solve it 
Mm. Um, I mean, the attempt is to put it under one umbrella. Again, uh, it is one use case that has resemblance with other actions or other use cases. So uh, this is why it ended up in this document. Um, I'm sure most of the design team is acquainted with the no, for, no further fast reroute use case, but let me know if you, if you want me to elaborate more on, on it. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll move to the next. I just want to quit this application that's causing some noise. Tariq, um, Tariq, just to be clear, I am, yeah, I know it uh, high level. I, is it, re this is related to the, is it related to the RSVP based ENC EMP and stuff like that? It's mm. re really r around multiple failures if you need it. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, yeah. It, I, if I'm, I'm, I'm not a co-author co of the draft, but I did speak to the co-authors and I will, I will, will invite them to, to talk more about it, but I don't think it attaches itself to any, uh, technology to set up yeah, a path. Indeed, there are some new technologies that you might be able to use for fast reroute if you have that feature. Right. So it's a general purpose and quite useful feature that stopped us from, from proposing a number of solutions many years ago. Uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with this use case, but uh, I have a simple question. Uh, is this uh, something should be uh, configured to uh, apply the entire flow, or is uh, something should be applied uh, on the packet? No, it applies packet to a packet. Base? No, it applies to a packet. So you've got a you've got a packet. It's being fast. Uh, it, it, it hits a failure. That packet. There's no state in the network, right? Because this is before states allowed to converge, right? Uh, you repair the packet. The packet goes somewhere else, and um the, the the network is really set up to single fader only in most cases and if you then do a subsequent fast reroute on it then um you can get messed down so uh, you would apply it to the pack you'd apply it to all packets going through for the duration of the fast reroute term but you don't have any control plane time to do anything otherwise you just reconverge the network or something else thanks Stuart. yeah that captures it well Applies to both RSVP and segment routing and and uh, LDP to anything, uh, to anything. And to many talking. other things. Mike Shand and I were looking at. How yeah, it's yeah. Um, yeah, it's independent of the original control plane signaling. It's uh, as Stuart said, it's in the data plane. Is it? Yeah. Understood. Great. Okay, so I'll move on to. Uh, this Actually, segment. just to finish that thought, um, one of the big use cases for this is for. Um, EVPN uh, uh, multi homing, and you know that's fast read out as well. But it's not RSVP, it's not LDP, it's not segment routing. It's just um, I have multi homing with EVPN, and you can cause a loop here. There's loads and loads of other techniques that applies to. It's just a very good universal technique that I wish we'd had some years ago. Yeah, yeah. but that that's one for example. There is other ways to solve that, right? Today. For it, um, well, let, let's think. So it depends on the fast reroute technique you're using. I, I don't. Uh, I'm talking multi specifically the, the EVPN multi homing one because we okay. have gone through that and uh, we solved that. We, uh, we, yeah. we, I don't want to talk with women and Stewart. I do not want to talk about the solution. Uh, in, no, sure, sure, sure. I, I just want to stick to the use case and it's valuable already established. It's valuable use case. Right. Now, well, we, a, what, what we were adding, Tarek, was further uh, nuances on the use cases, making the use case stronger. Okay, okay, sounds good. And the reason I brought up EVPN is that it's independent of the signaling. So it's a data plane use case, uh, and I think that might be worth capturing. Okay, I do, uh, I do um, encourage, uh, you know, the, the interested parties that, uh, you know, want to know about this use case to visit the draft, uh, the reference, to that draft is in section 2.1 and you know uh, I think it documents all the uh, examples that we're talking about these guys uh, to ask operators on whether or not they are interested uh, to solve this or not to ask a poll to the to the to the mailing list to see whether uh, which operators would be interested uh, to 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 solve this 
or is it implicit? So, so some of them don't know the need to solve it yet. Some of them. I mean, this is you know, some of this is about the issues of multiple failure. Yeah, okay, but they have operational networks today, I think, uh, Stuart, right? So they, this should have been seen today, as far as I can uh, understand. Yeah, we do have uh, customers who want, or operators who want to solve. So we didn't write this because we felt like writing a new draft. No, 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 but what I'm trying to say is that would it be worth asking a poll to the mailing list to say, please chime in? I mean, if there's really customers behind, it gives more meat to the bone is what I'm trying to uh, if, if, um, if, if I may, um, I, I think that it will be a valid question during their working group adoption poll. And that will probably be uh, applicable to uh, all the use cases that are documented. That's, 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 so, 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 so the, the problem with fast reroute failures is that very few people uh, have got the capability of, de of debugging and diagnosing them. I, I have a, another question uh, for this uh, use case. Is that no further fast route? Is that something will be enforced on the label submission pass or is, you know, if, it if, be. if it's, but uh, um, according to some discussion before, all this will be uh, actually, uh, all this uh, uh, data will be inserted at the label edge switch, uh, then, which means on the, that's no, 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 starting. no, no, not, not, not NFRR. No, that's done at the point of uh, pass route. It's a yeah. point of local route. Yeah, no. so, you, know, you may put the facility in at uh, the edge to say, you know, this packet must only be rerouted once. So, okay. Uh, so the okay. bit would be clear and then set on the, at the PLR. Okay, so the, you mean this, at least this data is uh, writable? on the past, right? This would be, have to be writable in the past. Okay, got it. So this have a very uh, simple implication on you if you want to uh, have a multiple copies of such uh, data, if you want to put it in the in, in stack state uh, data, right? You, if you want to modify that, you will need to write multiple places. No, not necessarily. It all depends. It, 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 I think it's a case by case basis, right? It depends on the exact network scenario you're setting up, whether you set. Yeah, I I heard uh, you want to put it this, uh, in, in SD, and want to put it closer yeah, to the you, top. You, so uh, yeah, I mean, we I, can I, dive I, I into the solution to, right now. Yeah, but, exactly. Okay, yeah, I, I, I just want to with uh, what you just said. Yeah, about, um, I, I just no no time to discuss the detail here, but I just want to understand the implication here. So, so uh, the implication is for sure. This is something writable it, on the path. It, it's, okay. it's writable on the path. Its lifetime and scope may be less than the complete path. Yes. Yeah. Understand. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other comment on the use case uh, itself? All right. Uh, the second use case that we documented was about in situ OEM. Uh, this is uh, OEM performed with user traffic as it traverses the MPLS network. There is a, a working group, working, uh, it's not a working group draft, it said there is draft that has been there in the MPLS working group for a while now, and it's trying to bring in uh, support for IOEM for MPLS data plane and enable uh, these performance measurement parameters and other uh, metadata to be uh, collected and carried with the user traffic. Um, and uh, in here, we just documented, uh, we, we documented this use case, but uh, we also left a reference to where the solution draft uh, initially is the proposed uh, a, a solution, uh, but then the working group and well, as well the design team has uh, has taken ownership of the solution as part of this uh, activity. So the use case is about IOEM. The solution itself is all, is co-owned by the authors of the draft IOEM and uh, the design team. Um, let let me know if you want me to elaborate on IOEM support for edge to edge as well as hop by hop.
My understanding for the hop by hop uh, is here that they want to add the delay and stuff. Uh, they want to add some information on the forwarding inside of the 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 uh, somewhere in the packet to be able to send that towards the yeah the yes, receiver. That's yeah. yeah. Um, if I may, uh, some clarification on the use case. So I would um, consider separately their signaling of. Uh, IAM profile and collection and transport of IAM data in the trigger packet. So um, there are different uh, techniques. So one of the use, the, the primary use case of IAM, as I see it, is signaling of IAM profile. So the data that telemetry to be collected. Uh, the technique as also indicated in a, a header, and it could be either uh, pre-allocated trace option, incremental trace option, uh, direct export, or hybrid two-step. The two last uh, techniques uh, use uh, separate uh, transport and not put data in the packet itself. Sure. Uh, so, Greg, Greg, my question is, do we need all of them uh, or do we want to support all of this or do we uh, just want the, all of them or it it's it's a very good question Wim. thank you and that's something that because... i believe that we need to discuss right okay. and all of them means uh, edge to edge and help by hop or wait wait no 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 so so the way i my, my understanding Tarek, I, from what i understand for greg there is multiple ways to expose the data finally right it, so... it, it now we're venturing to the solution isn't it correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah correct so, uh, but... not it's um not entirely i i i appreciate the win question and that's the right question for the group to discuss in my opinion <clears throat> because um what we uh look at is a uh, uh, profile of iom in mpls data plane so what set or subset of IEM functionality defined in IPPM working group to be supported or support documented in uh, MPLS data plane. To me, it's a similar to relationship between uh, RFC 5880 that defined BFD and RFC 5884, which defined use of only asynchronous mode of BFD with MPLS data plane. Um, yeah, my, my suggestion is that since we are working on um, uh, design a generic mechanics to support such use cases, then um, to me, and since this is now, it's not very important to, to decide which, which option of the IOM mode will be used. Uh, it can all be supported, but finally, it's up to the user to choose the one best suits their need. Um, I think that... Um we can look at it differently. Um, we define uh, applicability and specify applicability of the subset of IEM functionality with MPLS data plane as a design team. And anybody who wants to do other options, there will be uh, welcome to define these options. And that's basically uh, what I pointed out to uh, 5880 and 5884 is 5884 does not uh, preclude uh, defining or specification of using, for example, demand mode over MPLS LSP. It's just not defined in 5884. There is no prohibition, uh, so it doesn't say, oh, don't use it. Just said, well, if you use it, you're on your own. 5884 right. does not support demand mode of BFD, and so it does not support uh, BFD echo function. Over but Greg, would it would it be wise or uh, who could help? Because I, I think here we are trying to do this at speed and stuff like that, right? Would it make sense to basically say one of these options is what we wanted to see how we can optimize it or how we can support it? Well. Uh, 
Well, I do have my personal opinion. So if you want me to share it, uh, uh, because... actually, I want to give an action item uh, and move on. Uh, yeah, we should to... clarify. Uh, my point is, we should clarify which thing we should try to. It, it's a good oh, discussion. I, I am saying it. Uh, it's probably good. I just want to give uh, action item for next time meeting. Uh, so I don't mind if Greg wants to elaborate on the IOEM options use cases. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it. Okay, Greg, and I, you know, let me know if when you want to collaborate to that, I can add your name as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. Uh, I have been busy with this a bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, sounds good. Uh, all right. Uh, the the use case is understood, and there are some things that we need to elaborate on, and uh, I will move on to uh, to the next use case two dot three, if we don't have any other uh, point to raise on that. Uh, so 2.3 is talking about network slicing and network slicing uh, in, in T's working group, uh, uh, the, the T's working group has been busy uh, in having, in describing uh, applications of network slicing uh, in ITF and, and in the transport network, if, uh, if I want, if I may call it, uh, there is the introduction of uh, something called network resource partition, uh, which is uh, the underlay network. And uh, uh, the uh, a packet uh, can be assigned an underlay network or an NRP, NRP um, and uh, the packet would traverse this NRP uh, uh, as it uh, makes its way to the destination. And as it's tra traversing the NRP, it will use the resources allocated for that specific NRP. Now, um, there are uh, ways to identify the packet and associate it with NRP as it's uh, traversing the resources. Uh, one multiple ways uh, have been identified in drafts in these working group and other working group. One is carrying a global identifier in the packet. And the other one is allocating a effect for each uh, NRP. Uh, uh, per address, per destination address. Uh, there are uh, some pros and cons to each, uh, to each proposal, but, uh, you know, uh, we did document both uh, in this, uh, in this section 2.3. Uh, so that's do just. Want, uh, also do, here, do we want both, uh, Tarek? Yeah, I'm asking all the same question. That's a good question. The, 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 this will be, the answer would be driven by the, Implications on scalability. Uh, selecting uh, one option might have implications on scale and uh, you know and how scalable, uh, how many underlay NRP networks you you know the operator wants to deploy. Uh, and 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 there is a scale, couple of drafts that talk about uh, the implications of the proposal, and we can document it here, but it'll be redundant. Maybe we should only reference. I believe we did add many references, but we'll make sure that uh, selecting one over the other uh, is clearly understood. Uh, the implications of selecting one over the other one. Right. Okay. Um, uh, next. Hi, Tariq. Uh, a quick comment. I think uh, for the slicing use case, I, my suggestion was as uh, the previous times uh, to align the terminology. Like the, I see the net the slice selector is still here. Uh, maybe in the flow aggregate selector or flow a uh, slice aggregate, uh, we have the uh, terminologies updated in the T's working group. So better to align them with the T's. Okay. Yeah, I will make a promise to uh, align to the to the working group uh, adopted. Uh, you know, uh, uh, documents in T's, no problem. So terminology, that, that's fine. We can we can definitely align. Okay, I'll uh, I'll note that down as well. Okay, the next use case that we documented was about uh, delay budgets for time bound applications. Uh, there, there are some applications that, uh, you know, um, would require some, uh, delay budget end to end. 
and um, it can be realized by um, by setting a, a, a per segment or per, per sub uh, sub path uh, budget. So if you break the the end to end path into segments, you can assign each segment a a budget. Uh, and uh, the packet itself carries the, the budgets for per segment. Uh, and then uh, as the packet traverses the, the path, uh, these nodes can inspect the time budget, budget and schedule the packet accordingly. And, 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 and in fact, it can, they can decide to drop the packet if uh, it's not achievable. Uh, so the use case is close to uh, you know, achieving what DeadNet does and uh, we discussed it. Uh, the co-authors of this draft, you know, mm, had uh, mm, related it to a, a dead net application. Uh, but the important part about this, I wanted to flag, is there is a possibility of in stack data uh, being carried, multiple in stack data being carried in uh, in the label stack. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, the, each in-stack data will be applicable to a segment of the path. So this we can realize it with in-stack data, but it will be harder to re realize that with post-stack data, because obviously, you know, like you need a pointer to say which part of the PSD now I should invoke uh, as I'm traversing the the path. But when you have it in-stack, then it's applicable up to the you know, the, the segment label uh, that I'm traversing. And then, you know, you can pop that ISD and move on. So there's quite a few ways of skinning that particular cat, but the important thing is that the use case exists in a number of formats and um, does resolve a limitation with that net. I agree. I but, don't want but to We shouldn't get into the detail because you, yeah. you know, things you say can't be done. Actually, you probably could do if you really wanted. To. I, I didn't say I didn't. I don't know how. Yeah, I, maybe challenging. Oh, no, you can. I think you can do that even with post tech data. But I, I do it. Let's not uh, dwell upon okay. it right now. Okay, perfect. So what I wanted to say that uh, you know this is a use case uh, that uh, we, we looked at, and it uh, it can uh, carry the ancillary data and the packet. It's certainly one of the more important use cases for this whole program, because there is a need for um, uh, this sort of um, uh, latency control and uh, none of the techniques we've got at the moment really do it well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my understanding is there are some documents uh, related to this topic and they provide some uh, kind of solutions based on like segment, segment routing, the existing segment routing mechanisms. Yeah, yeah. Don't think the existing segment routing has that, has that got the, um, the, the, the the maximum permitted dwell time in it? Uh, didn't get that. Sorry, I'll repeat the high. So, so, so has the segment routing ones got the information on how long the packet uh, is allowed to spend getting to the next critical point? I, I, I don't know what Jimmy is referring to, but uh, there is some segment routing proposal even in the in this section uh, documented to, to, to be basically carry with the segment routing uh, inside MPLS, basically SR MPLS to carry the, the time budget with it. Uh, and we left a reference to the document, original document that proposed the idea. So again, each section is trying to reference a uh, the document that introduced the uh, use case um i don't know if that's what you mean uh, jimmy uh, I, there is a reference in this section i invite you to look at it mm, i didn't find a reference about um, in this section but i think uh, maybe we can add a reference later to the okay. existing documents yeah i will look in you know if you have a reference please bring it up i don't mind to add it as well Okay. If you send me the pointer, that should be fine. Yeah, I will check. Okay. Uh, okay. The next uh, next use case in section two dot five was about NSH network uh, service header based uh, service function chaining, and for this we we know that we in MPLS we have a an RFC that. Uh, tries to emulate the NSH uh, inside the MPLS label stack. Uh, 
Um, there were some limitations identified and um, the authors spoke about that. There were opinions and here, uh, uh, Greg and Huayu, you're uh, welcome to uh, chime in as well. But there are some limitations with the proposed, with the, with the solution uh, that we have in MPLS. And this use case is trying to plug the gap or trying to, um, you know, address the limitations of that uh, emulation for the NSH. And I will stop here and ask uh, Greg and Huayu, you know, the, uh, to, to pitch in on that uh, use okay. case. Yes, um, there are two aspects and uh, actually um, the first one was uh, identified uh, earlier uh, then in, in the course of discussions uh, with the co-authors, uh, we found uh, another one uh, very important. So uh, the first is um, how to realize uh, OEM uh, with this um, MPLS-based uh, uh, service function chaining. And um, the uh, issue is that uh, there is no expectation of a service function uh, functionality so that um, SFC or SFP OEM should not be passed uh, to service function. And if their uh, basic element, uh, which uh, consists uh, constructed of two label stack elements, um, is used, then we need a way of indicating that the payload is OEM. Uh, using GAL label was proposed and discussed, but then we decided that uh, there are some existing implementations uh, that um, um, the proposed solution uh, might affect, and we brought it for uh, open design team. So, um, uh, that's uh, support of OEM uh, for uh, MPLS based uh, service function chaining. And another, as Tarek pointed out, their uh, idea or goal of the RFC 8595 is to emulate uh, NSH functionality uh, using uh, label stack elements. Um, and 8595 does it for uh, two elements of NSH. Uh, the base header and um, service path header, but uh, it does not address um, their context headers. And context headers uh, can have, uh, they are intended for carrying metadata, whether fixed size or variable length. So the second use case that we bring in here uh, is uh, emulating context headers, so to carry metadata uh, derived from uh, the payload. Um, and um, again, yeah, so, we are not yeah. recommending using any particular methods, so just documenting a use case. Yeah, I have, I have two uh, things I wanted to, <laughs> to say. I first, I think we should change the title to NSH base because it's NSH emulation or something like that, right? So they okay. want, we want. Yeah, I agree. I, I think. And the second thing I have, and this is, I, I was against uh, adopting this uh, thing in the first place because of the limitations. I or one of the reasons was the limitations, and if we would use NSH today on top of MPLS, which today is also an RFC, you don't, you have all of this today. So I agree. I'm, I'm a bit questioning whether this is re whether this really makes sense in my view. Okay, okay, uh, that's all valid questions, Wim. So yes, there is uh, 8596, which defines how to use MPLS underlay uh, yeah. to connect SFFs. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And then you use NSH uh, 8300, uh, and you get yeah. everything. Absolutely. Indeed. But our, our approach was that since we have 8595, so it, uh, we just pointed out to uh, issues that 8595 uh, did not address. Yeah, so, I agree with, with uh, the issues, uh, Greg, don't get me wrong, but at that time when we adopted, we said, okay, we don't care about these issues, so we are okay without them. And now we uh, wanted to add... I, Personally, surprised that we don't care about OEM. 
No, 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 wait. So I, we, I, can, no, I, no. I, I can agree that we don't care about metadata, and that's perfectly fine. But if we say, if, okay, if we publish a standard based RFC that explains how to do certain things, and we saying that, oh, we don't care how you troubleshoot it. No, no, but I, what I'm trying to say, Greg, at that time when we were trying to adopt, there was a number of issues raised with this solution, but we went for it, right? So the, and as is, and I, I think this one should really go to the operators to see whether we really want to do it because we have an alternative, even with MPLS to do these things today. Okay, that's fine. You know, if we want to say that, uh, Okay, whatever we want to say. I, I think that it's a very valid question for a uh, working group adoption poll. So if somebody th thinks that uh, this is not an uh, important case and it should be removed from the uh, document that working group adopts, uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, I, I think that this is a valid for adoption poll. It, it, we can discuss it now. That's fine too. So if we say that this uh, technique, the MPLS based uh, service function chaining uh, is decremental and problematic, okay. The, the question, Greg and, and Wim, is is it in deployment today, uh, RFC 8595? And, and if it is, then we have a gap we need to fill. So yes, I, I think Tarek, you you guys, I, I think it was Juniper who was pushing for this. So you sh guys should probably answer this question. We can definitely take. I mean, I'm uh, I can take it with our colleague and Juniper, but I think it's to the wider community as well. It's no, not... for sure, sure, sure. But what I'm saying, uh, you guys have been pushing this. I am not aware of any deployment uh, from this. But okay, so I don't have a full view. I agree with Greg that we can bring it up. I'm not standing next to the, any use case and. If the working group consensus is with, we don't want to work on this use case, then we can drop it off. Uh, that's fine. Uh, so we, uh, we will move on to the next one and in interest of time. Uh, the next one is uh, network programming. This is something that was introduced with segment routing, uh, specifically V6. And uh, the design team, uh, this is coming from the design team now that uh, thought that there, uh, you know, that's something that MPLS data plane uh, is missing, and we can uh, we can fill this gap. Uh, and uh, should we look into you know ways to fill this gap, and basically to allow the packet to carry a, a function and possibly some arguments, and invoke this function and argument on specific. Uh, you know, nodes and uh, as, as the packet is traversing the path. So the network programming use case is very well documented in, in, uh, in the segment routing RFC. Uh, I can't remember the, the number, uh, but what we're trying to do here is to see if we can fill this gap in MPLS data plane. Yeah, my, my, my question here is the following Tarek, right? Uh, is which part, but I, You've somehow answered it, but if it's function argument, it's very generic. Which part of the networking programming draft, because they have defined all of these different uh, forwarding capabilities, right? Uh, what are we looking at here? Because most of it we already have. Indeed, if uh, we what we're trying to do is fill the gap, is what would we don't have. I, I would say that we have almost everything. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and if you can, yeah. But my my point is, network program is so broad. And my question is really, which piece do we believe we don't have that we absolutely need? The idea of invoking a function on a, on a packet uh, using uh, data or, uh, and passing ancillary data as well. So it all comes back to the same discussion, if you think about it, is the packet carries an action and an, an ancillary data. Yeah, but so with, with what? Okay. With what? And it's an implicit use case of the framework somehow, right? Uh, we can elaborate on what uh, what parts of the uh, you know of the network programming are missing and which ones are we trying to plug in. If that's what you're asking, yeah, that's what I'm asking because it's so broad. I what does it mean in this case? It's so broad because if you say I need an action with data, 
it's kind of implied with with what we have somehow. So it's it's I think, I'm not sure how you interpret this and and what do you do with this because it's so fluffy uh, from my right. perspective compared to the others. Uh, okay, I can take an action item uh, to elaborate on what what uh, gaps are in MPLS for network programming. The, the next uh, section is, it, it was again brought up by the design team. I think, uh, yeah, we still have two minutes. Uh, um, the, the application aware networking is something that uh, uh, was already presented at IETF and the idea of the packet carrying some, uh, something that uh, identifies the application itself and the nodes, in, you know, uh, uh, invoking a behavior based on that. Um, this is very high level, and uh, we didn't actually discuss it too much details in the design team. Um, and it's up um, for this debate if it is a use case that we uh, we have much interest in it. Uh, so you feel free to critique it. So that's the last use case that we covered. Uh, and, um, you know, if I may move on, there was the coexistence of these use cases. Obviously, we talked about multiple, like, for example, no, no fast reroute. And yeah, imagine right. that I want, I'm doing something else like network slicing. Uh, so the coexistence of the use cases is uh, by itself something that uh, once we establish one use case or a couple of use cases, something that we need to uh, cover as well. Yeah, I agree. And that's where APN comes into the picture because some of these things have very much similarities, right? And so there is quite some commonalities with some of them, not with all of them. That's right. And this is why. As a result, if you have them together, uh, the question is what is the most optimal way of doing that, right? So that's. It's yeah. exactly what uh, the, the design team is trying to do. Yeah. 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 No, no, that's good. Yeah. Um, we're right on time and uh, I think we're done and at least with this item, um, there was other items on the agenda, but we didn't get to. Um, uh, I just want to notify the, the chairs and uh, that this, we did update, update the revision on this draft. Uh, the co-authors thought that this is a good starting point to start the poll. Um, um, that's just what a signal that we wanted to send uh, um, that we are open to uh, uh, moving the ball forward with the adoption on this uh, draft. It doesn't mean that uh, you know the that people can critique it and raise alarms. Uh, so during the poll. So Tarek, when it comes to inserting or removing use cases is that something you see that we can do uh, as part of the working group process I, I think we have to the working group needs consensus on inserting and removing um, and once the document is in the hands of the working group I think you know we can continue to do either insertion of removal or removal now, if it becomes a blocker use case during the poll, then that's uh, you know that's something we can look into and act on. But I, I don't know if we have consensus on any one use case that should be removed now or should be added. Uh, uh, I don't know either. I'm just asking because yeah. because if we can add use cases uh, and we can remove use cases then I think this is a pretty good starting point because it's not restricting the work group uh, a process. I think that's up to the working group. It's not, it's not up to the authors. Uh, I, I, I understand. I, I'm kind of asking for uh, how they think about it. Yeah, the author's opinion is that uh, you know uh, we want the engage we want to engage the working group on the decision to remove or add, and uh, definitely the authors can take an uh, you know uh, on on uh, 
take on the, you know, editing and elaborating on the use case. But we don't want to make that decision on our own of adding or removing a use case. But I think it's useful to start with a list so that the work group has something to chew on. Um, so I think that combination of here's an initial list and then, you know, the working group can decide where to go with it, um, both adding and removing or, or even modifying. <clears throat> um, so I think this is a decent starting place. So it's for me, that is uh, the shepherd of this document. That actually means that uh, an argument that say, during the working group adoption poll that says, this use case is missing, I want to add it. That would not be blocking. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think it should be noted, but it's not well, the, yeah, no, it's no, like philosophy we discussed earlier on, right? But is it a good is the document a good starting point the, yes the document is a good starting point um we should just adopt it and then use the working group process to add subtract delete and modify right right okay i have a request before the chairs drop off that uh, the first nibble discussion be moved to the front of next week's discussion that's normal, yeah, after the AP list. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll stop the recording right here. And.